Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Central United Methodist Church in Mount Airy, North Carolina. It's a little bit rainy and possibly stormy here, uh, but our thoughts are with all those people in the southeast that have been affected by tornadoes uh, and high winds and heavy rain. Uh, we hope that you are safe wherever you're located, and we uh, pray that you'll uh, be alert to uh, the weather that's happening wherever you are. Uh, as we begin uh, this Palm Sunday, uh, we also want to remind you that this is Holy Week and we'll be having several services. Uh, on Monday, Thursday, uh, April the 1st, we'll live stream worship from here in the sanctuary. That will include uh, Holy Communion, so please have some bread or crackers and grape juice with you wherever you are so that you can join us. And then on Good Friday, April the 2nd at 7 o'clock p.m., again, uh, we will have live stream worship here in the sanctuary with the service of Tenebrae. Um, uh, always a, a, a very contemplative uh, and in its own way beautiful service. So I hope you'll join us for Good Friday live stream worship for Tenebrae, with Tenebrae as well. And then on Easter Sunday... At 7 o'clock a.m., we will have a sunrise service that will be a drive-in worship service over in our parking lot here at 1909 North Main Street. And then uh, on April the 4th, on sun Easter Sunday, we'll have 11 a.m. live stream worship here in the sanctuary. And again, that will be with Holy Communion. And so uh, have some bread and crackers or... Uh, crackers and uh, uh, grape juice with you so you can celebrate with us. And then uh, the following Sunday we'll resume our drive-in worship at 9 a.m. and uh, live stream worship at 11 a.m. And please stay tuned. The, the uh, trustees here at Central are diligently uh, planning and preparing uh, to return to in-person public worship in the near future. So uh, please uh, bear with us as we uh, make progress towards uh, coming back together uh, in public worship. Uh, we wanna, I want to alert you to a couple things. The Surrey County Health Department has some excess vaccine for COVID-19. And if you or someone you know is interested in getting, getting a shot, please email Allie Willard uh, at W-I-L-L-A-R-D-A at co.surrey.nc.us. Just give a name and phone number and they'll be able to schedule you for vaccination. We also are continuing to cooperate with the county health department and we have testing here. The, the county is, conduct, is conducting COVID testing uh, every week through the end of June and we have a, a schedule in our bulletin as well. So uh, uh, please uh, find this bulletin. It should be a couple posts down from this live stream broadcast. You can follow our worship service, plus you can get all the uh, additional information here in this, our schedule, uh, information about COVID-19, testing and vaccination. And we also have included that on this week's uh, newsletter, which is posted again on our Facebook page uh, nearby. All right. Well, today is Palm Sunday, and uh, the events from Palm Sunday to Good Friday and Easter happen in very rapid succession. And in the scripture, it's just a, a few chapters. Uh, and today, being Palm Sunday, a lot of times people will skip from the celebration and the parade on Palm Sunday and waving the palms and and uh, celebrating to directly to uh, Easter and the empty tomb and the risen Jesus. But we want to dwell a little bit longer during this season of Lent and consider what it means that Jesus died for us that we might have life. And there was an interesting thing that happened on Tuesday or Wednesday of that week. Jesus was sharing a meal. And during that meal, a woman entered the house and poured expensive perfume over his head. What was she doing? 
What was she thinking? Hmm. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that we are able to gather to worship, even though it may be virtually through this live stream on Facebook. And, uh, but Lord, uh, when we think of that unnamed woman pouring out that expensive perfume on Jesus, well, that sounds like worship. Lord, help us to pour out ourselves extravagantly that we might worship your son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that we might have life and have that for eternity. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might worship in spirit and in truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Will you join me in receiving the opening sentence of Scripture, which is actually quite lengthy this morning. It comes from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, and I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. 
When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They said, <clears throat> They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Church, our opening hymn this morning is appropriately. All glory, laud, and honor, would you please join with us?
Church, would you join me in our prayer of confession? Again, it is found in your bulletin posted on this page. Christ our Lord calls all who love him earnestly to repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way of peace. Come into the brokenness of our lives and our land with your healing love. Help us to be willing to bow before you in true repentance and to bow to one another in real forgiveness. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, melt our hard hearts and consume the pride and prejudice which separate us. Fill us, O Lord, with your perfect love, which casts out our fear and bind us together in that unity which you share with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. And again, I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Today's Psalter reading is from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will exult and rejoice in your steadfast love, because you have seen my affliction. You have taken heed of my adversities and have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye waste away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And today's epistle lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now would you please sing together, Jesus Loves Me, as it's found in your bulletin. And as we sing, would all the children who are present please gather around the screen for children's time. Thank you. 
Thank you, Kenneth. This past week, uh, several members at Central and several members from churches in the Greater Mount Airy Missional Network of United Methodist Churches uh, gathered together and we packed some more of those survivor bags for people uh, in the community that are suffering from uh, substance use disorder. Uh, it's part of the ongoing opioid uh, crisis that we have here in Surrey County and around this nation. And we got to hear a witness from uh, one of the uh, volunteers, a lady who uh, helped establish something called the Birches Foundation. And she uh, told us uh, about how these uh, survivor bags have been received and uh, the tears that she saw shed by, by grown men who received these bags. And you'll get to see that in the next weeks uh, uh, in months as we post that uh, videoed uh, testimony. But I just want to thank you for all the people that uh, crocheted or knitted uh, the toboggans, the beanies, all those who crocheted or, or knitted the, the washcloths and everybody that donated uh, the bags themselves, the, uh, the band-aids, uh, the combs, uh, the toothbrushes, toothpaste, the soap, the shampoo, everything to help those people start their road of re on to recovery. And so thank you for your beautiful witness uh, and your caring in the name of Jesus Christ. And in that spirit, in that spirit, let's prepare to present God with his tithes and our offerings. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have been gracious to us in the life, death, and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came to us in the distress of our sin, seeking to save us, body and soul. Jesus spent his life and his blood in the sorrow and scorn of the cross so that we might have life, life everlasting. Father, we can never repay you for what you have done for us in Jesus Christ. However, in our worship, we give you thanks, praise, and these, your tithes, in our offerings. Please accept these gifts to spread the good news of forgiveness and salvation in Jesus. Bless these gifts and multiply them according to your will, not ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in your tender love for us, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and come to share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This morning we have a few folks who have been added to our prayer list and some who we ask that you continue to lift up this week. Would you please lift up Bill Lundy, Marilyn Ledford, Mary Alice Myers, the family of Julia Merritt Fuller, Kathy Spires, Janet Nichols, Troy Payne, Geneva Prophet, Linda Boone, Eleanor Powell Hines, and Linda Stanfield, if you would please add Linda to the prayer list. We also pray that you would bear with us this morning. Sometimes we like to vary things up a little bit, but I realized I did not come down with my mic, and I apologize for stressing Doug out just a little bit. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Through the shouts and branches, the Savior rides again into our hearts, our Jerusalems, the places that we have fortified, sometimes against even God's truth and love. Patient God, be with us today as we witness again the entry of Jesus into the holy city. Remind us that our holy cities, our souls, need to welcome Jesus truly in celebration and in commitment to his witness to us. We can so easily get caught up in the noise and forget our Savior. We can get so focused on the celebration and colors that we look past that solitary figure on a small donkey. We stand at the gates this day to welcome Jesus. May our welcome of Jesus also be reflected in our welcome of others who come into our midst. Free us from judgment and prejudice that we may be open to hearing your word through the ministry of Jesus and the disciples. As we have spoken the names of ones who are near and dear to us, who need your healing love, O oh God, help us also to remember that we need a good measure of your grace and mercy. Bring us through this parade into the comfort of your love. Hosanna, blessed is Jesus, blessed is he who has come and who continues to come into our lives forever. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church, our next hymn this morning, Sing As You Feel Led, is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna.
Let's turn now to the gospel according to Mark. This time in chapter 14, beginning there with the first verse. Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. While he was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted this way? For, for this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today in the life of the church, we celebrate Palm Sunday. The Sunday Jesus rolled a colt, the foal of a donkey, into Jerusalem. Kinnett shared the scriptures that described how the crowds along the Jericho Road greeted Jesus like a king. They laid palm branches. Some even laid their, their cloaks on the ground in front of Jesus as he rode down the Mount of Olives toward the gates of the city. Many church pastors keep on reading the scriptures, continuing from the account of Palm Sunday to Monday, Thursday, and on to Good Friday. Since we will have services here at Central on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, I want to stop right here. Right here in Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Now, these events probably took place either on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on how you count backwards from the day of Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. From Palm Sunday to Wednesday that, of that week, Jesus and his disciples would, each, would spend each day in Jerusalem teaching, preaching, and prophesying. Each evening, Jesus and his disciples would walk back up the road to Jericho and spend the night in Bethany. Bethany was a small village near the, the top of the Mount of Olives. And on this particular evening, Two days before the Passover and Feast of the Unleavened Bread, as Jesus and his disciples were sharing a meal at the house of Simon the leper, a woman approached the table. She had some very expensive perfume sealed in a very expensive alabaster jar. Right there in the middle of the meal, without fanfare and without warning, the woman broke open the alabaster jar and poured the perfume all over Jesus' head. The owner of the house, his family, the dinner guests, and the disciples didn't know what to make of such a sight. Shocked, the first thing the people in the room with Jesus said was, why waste such expensive perfume? It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. Mark says they became indignant and they scolded her harshly. What was she thinking? What did she do? Indeed, it was an expensive action on the woman's part. Mark notes that the perfume was nard or spike nard. It was made from the stems and roots of an herb called nard that grows in the Himalayan region of India. Hear that, the Himalayan region of India. I checked the distance from there to Israel and it is over 4,000 miles. In ancient times, remember, there were no trucks, trains, or airplanes, only caravans of pack animals, carts, 
and boats. And on top of that, Mark lets us know Nard was sealed in an alabaster container. That was typical. It was sealed in an alabaster container for export in order to ensure its freshness over that long journey from India to Israel. Alabaster is a soft mineral found in the form of a rock which is intricately carved to produce such containers. So we can see that alabaster jar of perfume had to have been very, very expensive. The dinner guests estimated its value to be equivalent to a year's wages, 300 denarii at that time. One scholar wrote that nard was only used for very special events like a bride on her wedding day or a woman who was going to meet a king, royalty. Often an alabaster jar of nard was never used. Such an occasion never presented itself to waste such valuable perfume. And if it wasn't used, it became a family heirloom passed down from generation to generation to generation, mother to daughter. So when the dinner guests in the house of Simon the leper saw the woman pour out this very expensive perfume all over Jesus' head, some of them thought how during Passover it was the custom of that time to give alms to the poor. All they could think of was how the cost of all that perfume could have been used to, instead to help the poor, and they became angry about it. And given Jesus' concern for the poor, you would think Jesus would, agree, would have agreed with them. But instead, Jesus had an entirely different reaction. Jesus said, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing for me? You will always have the poor among you, and you can help them whenever you want to, but you will not always have me. And then Jesus explained exactly what the woman had done. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the whole wide world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Perhaps with not even knowing it, the woman had performed a prophetic act at that meal. Jesus had prophesied himself to his disciples at least three times on three occasions that he would be rejected by the leaders of Israel, that he would suffer and that he would die, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. Did the woman know the prophecy that Jesus had spoken? We don't really know. But remember, anointing someone's head wasn't only something done in preparation for burial. Anointing the head was also done to a man who was about to be crowned king. Jesus had been treated like a king riding into Jerusalem. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Perhaps the woman wanted to anoint her lord and king. Jesus. But as Jesus tried to tell them, his coronation wouldn't be as they expected. Instead, Jesus would be given a crown made of thorns, not gold. Instead of taking his place on a throne, Jesus would be nailed to a cross with a sign above him that proclaimed, King of the Jews, in mockery. And then after he bled and died in agony, Jesus would be, be buried in a borrowed tomb. What was that woman thinking? What did she do? Just for a moment, just for a moment, everybody, I want you to close your eyes and imagine. Imagine with me. Imagine a time when you walked into a department store like Belk or Tallheimer's or Ivy's or, or Dillard's. Think about that. What was there near the entrance? Usually the perfume counter was near the main entrance of that department store. Remember the smell of the perfume counter? It was overpowering. Sometimes it was even difficult to catch your breath. Sometimes all that perfume made your eyes water. 
And then there came the sales lady from behind the counter asking if you would like to smell a sample of their newest fragrance. Once when I was a little boy, I didn't know any better, and I said yes, and the lady squirted me with some of that perfume, and despite baths and soap and water, I couldn't get rid of that perfume smell. Did that ever happen to you? Now imagine how Jesus smelled after that whole alabaster jar of perfume was poured over his head. The smell of perfume filling the house of Simon the leper and lingering upon Jesus for the rest of that week. The fragrance of the nard was there when Jesus shared that last supper. It, it followed him to, to the garden of Gethsemane, to his trial. The smell of that perfume followed Jesus as he carried his cross all the way to Calvary. And now open your eyes. What did that woman do? What was she thinking? I believe all she did was show Jesus how grateful she was for all that Jesus had done for her. I believe all she did was to show how much she loved Jesus. I believe she worshipped Jesus as the Lord of her life and anointed him her king. Besides her life itself, the woman poured out the most valuable perfume she had to give Jesus, the best gift that she could think to give. And that gift touched Jesus deeply. Jesus told everyone there that she had done a good thing. And now think of that smell of perfume. Think of how it reminded Jesus all that week of the love and gratitude of someone, someone who had repented and believed in the good news that he had preached, a woman whose life had been changed. And now think of the fragrance of that perfume and how it encouraged Jesus as he offered his life, his life as a sacrifice, a gift for the forgiveness of our sins. Church, we don't know that woman's name, but we know what she did because Jesus won't ever let us forget. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our final hymn this morning is Go to Dark Gethsemane. Go to Dark Gethsemane. Let's sing together.
What was that woman thinking? What was she doing pouring out that expensive perfume all over Jesus' head? I believe she was worshiping. I believe she was anointing her king. But Jesus knew she was preparing him for burial. Jesus is our Lord, our King, our Savior. As we remember what that woman did long ago, what will we do? What will we do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Amen.